Uh, good morning, everybody. Sorry, just had to get that out. Day two of COVID. Whew, what a bear. <laughs> get it? Chucky bear? See what I did there? Okay, sorry. Yeah, so I'm I'm all pent up at my parents' house. Uh, you know, my cameraman and producer. <laughs> but I got them sick, so we're all hunkering down together. And, uh, I'm just going to be a little cozied up here today. Now, as you can see, I don't have Ezra 3 in front of me, but that's okay because I memorized it. So, if you hear people dying in the background, just ignore them. They're my parents. We'll be fine. Ezra, chapter 3. I'm just going to jump in there. Uh, this is when they're rebuilding the temple and currently fo focusing on the altar. All right. Chapter 3 When the seventh month came, and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled as one man in Jerusalem. Then Yeshua, son of Josadak, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates, they began to build the altar of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, who is the man of God. Sheesh, that's a run-on. Despite their fear of the people around them, they built the altar on its foundations. <coughs> Excuse me. And sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and the evening sacrifices. Then, in accordance with what was written, they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Yay! With the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. And that, they prescribed the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, and the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred feasts of the Lord, as well as those brought as free will offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord through the foundation of the Lord's, though, though the foundation of the Lord's temple had not yet been laid. Oh, barbecue. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sick, but I'm still hungry. Uh, rebuilding the temple. Then they gave money to the masons and carpenters and gave food and drink and oil to the people of S Sidon, Sidon, I think, Sidon, Sidon. And Ty Tyre, 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 Sidon, and Tyre. Guys, I'm I'm struggling today. <sighs> okay, we're gonna get through this together. Uh, so that they would bring cedar logs by sea from Lebanon to y Joppa, as authorized by Cyrus, king of Persia. In the second month of the second year after their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Yeshua, son of jo Yozadak, and the rest of their brothers, the priests and the Levites and all who returned from captivity to Jerusalem, they began their work, appointing Levites 20 years of age and older to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Now, Yeshua and his sons and brothers and Cadmiel and his sons, descendants of Hodai Hodaviah, and the sons of Hedadad, and their sons and brothers, all of which were Levites, they all joined together in supervising those working on the house of God. It's a family affair. When the builders lay the... It's a family affair. So, okay, dang it. There I go. When the builders lay the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests and their vestments and with their trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, took their place, places of praise, um, took their places to praise the Lord, as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good, His love to Israel endures forever. Now, I, we don't, side note, this is Chucky Bear, we don't know that that's the actual tune. He is good. His love to Israel endures forever. But it's a pretty awesome tune. And I just came up with that. Okay. All right. So, anyway. And then, um, let's see. Chapter 3, verse 11. All right. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord. Yay! 
because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping, because the people made so much noise, and the sound was heard far away. Okay, so um, just just to clarify something there at the end, the weeping and the sounds of joy. Um, the weeping was because, uh, as we find in other chapters and other peripheral texts, um, that the older people remembered the, the temple of, of Solomon and, and its grandeur and splendor and remarkable beauty and, um, and holiness. It was like a bittersweet. They were happy to see the new temple being made, but it was also, you know, like um, uh, it hurt, you know, because they missed their old temple. And yeah, um, I kind of get it because this is like my new blanket. And I love it so much, and it's awesome. But sometimes it reminds me of an older blanket that I had. And I'm like, oh, I, I miss that blanket. But I do love this one. And anyway, that's Chuck Theology uh, 101 for you. And, um, you know, there's some other stuff in that. But I'm, I am feeling pretty tired. And, um, and um, yeah, just going over my notes real quick. I think anything else I'll, I'll include in the lesson notes below. So I hope that you're staying well, um, and thank you for listening or watching, and um, I will see you tomorrow with Ezra, chapter four. And um, this is Chucky Bear.